Hi everyone, it's Kirsty back again. How are you? Uh, welcome to what is, I think, the last junior church of the year. What a year it's been. It's been a bit strange, hasn't it? It's a bit strange for you watching us all on the, the uh, computer screen or the TV screen. It's been a, bit, a little, little bit strange for us doing, uh, doing our lessons online as well. But um, we've enjoyed it. And um, so welcome to the last one of the year. Um, we're going to do some imagining today because I know you're really good at imagining. So I'd like you to imagine that you had, uh, you were in control and you had the uh, chance to pick um, a very powerful woman to change the world. Who would you pick? Well, I've got a few options for you. Would you pick this lady? Do we know who this is? This is the Queen. She's quite powerful, isn't she? She's certainly got the opportunity to change the world, certainly to change this country and to change things around the world. Would you pick the Queen? Hmm, you might do. Or would you go a little further afield and pick this lady? Do you know who this is? This is Michelle Obama. So she was President Obama's wife. Well, she still is his wife, but he's not, he's not the president anymore. Uh, she was pretty powerful in her time in, in office. She changed things for the lives of women and for the lives of girls, certainly in education. Pretty powerful. She might, so you might pick her if you wanted to. Uh, I've got some other options for you. If you wanted to go a bit more sort of popular vote, you might choose this lady. Anyone know who this is? So you'll only really know who this is if you stayed up very late in the past few weeks. This was, uh, this is Giovanna Fletcher and she won a TV competition um, for staying in a dark, unheated castle for the longest time. She's pretty powerful. She might be quite powerful in the future, so I'd look out for her. You might pick Giovanna if you liked her. Uh, you might go a bit more popular even than that. You might pick this lady. We know who this is. It's Beyonce. Look, we could almost be sisters, couldn't we? Me and Beyonce. Um, so she's pretty powerful. She's probably the most famous woman in pop at the moment. Many would argue she's not, but she's pretty powerful and she speaks up for, for rights and she speaks up for herself and what she thinks. So she's quite powerful. What do you think about those four options then? Pretty powerful women, aren't they? Would you pick one of those? Hmm. The chances are you wouldn't do what God do, what God did in verse 27 of Luke 1. So God is going to he's wanting to change the world. And he starts in Nazareth, a very obscure place. He starts in Galilee, a very provincial backwater. No one's really heard of it and no one's really written about it before. And he starts with this lady. And do you know who that is? That's right, that's Mary. Now she was probably a teenager, probably quite poor, probably quite insignificant. And God chose her for a very, very special job. Because God doesn't choose the important people sometimes. He doesn't choose people with influence. He chooses the very, very lowly people, and God chose Mary. And we all know what job God chose Mary for. It was changing the world in an incredible way. So let me read to you. So reading from Luke 1, the angel appeared to Mary and said, greetings, you are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me according to your word. Then the angel left her. So Mary had an angel appear to her 
and tell her that she's found favour with God and she's going to be the mother of the Son of God. Imagine what she thought. I mean, she, she might have realised she was going to be one of the most powerful people of all time. How does Mary respond? Well, I know sometimes when some people have told me that, that um, something really good is going to happen to me, I get a bit sort of full of myself. And I'm sure that's what happened to everybody there. And you'd run around and you'd go, guess what? Guess what I've just heard? I've just heard I'm going to be really powerful and I'm going to do this really special thing. Mary doesn't do that. Mary says all of that points it back to God. It's, she knows it's not about her. Listen to what she says. She says, my soul glorifies the Lord. Literally, my soul bigs the Lord up. My soul bigs God up. She knows it's not about her. And this is why God chose Mary. God didn't choose a powerful person to be the mother of the Son of God, to bring himself to life on earth. He chose Mary. And he chose Mary because he is a loving God. And he chooses each of us for that very reason. He chooses us because he trusts us to enact his words and he trusts us not to kind of just run around boasting but that we can be humble and that we can be good people. So maybe today you're feeling a bit down, feeling a bit weak, it's, you know, everyone's just finished school and everyone's tired and maybe sometimes in life you feel a bit small and insignificant. Maybe you're feeling a bit like a nobody. I know I do sometimes. If you are, Mary would say, that's great because God chooses people like you. If you respect God for who he is, if you fear him, then God will show mercy on you. God will lift you up. God will fill you with good things. Because that's what he did when he chose a nobody like Mary. That's what he's always done. And that's what he's promised to do for us. So when you hear the Christmas story this year, think about poor Mary who was terrified. And think about her reaction to that news. She knew that it was all about God. It wasn't about her. And I hope you have a really, really nice Christmas. And I think I brought somebody along with me who probably wants to say Happy Christmas to you. Can you guess who it might be? Come on then. Come on then. It's Sooty. He couldn't let this go by without saying goodbye to you all and a very happy Christmas. And we'll see you all again in 2021. Okay. Still waving, City. <laughs> you can keep waving.